Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Christina schraner burgener She is the Special Envoy of the United Nations Secretary General on Myanmar and she joins us from Bern in Switzerland. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Myanmar has been rocked by a wave of protests since the army staged a coup on February 1st. Uh, the army claimed that the general elections largely won by the National League for Democracy led by Nobel Peace Prize winner Aung San Suu Kyi, were actually fraudulent. And so the military decided to brutally put an end to 10 years of cohabitation with the civilian regime. Security forces killed two protesters in Mandalay, the country's second largest city, on Saturday. However, the protests continue unabated. So a very uh, drastic question, if I may begin with. Do you fear a bloodbath like the one we've witnessed back in 1988? Well, clearly there is always a danger that uh, there can be a crackdown, which will be very bloody because so many people are on the street. Uh, but I think the dimension is much bigger now than in 1988 or 2008. And the people, they have social media, they are quite well organized and they are very determined not to stop those demonstrations. And uh, for us uh, now, the Tamado, the army uh, hesitating a lot to use violence uh, because they exactly know that could be that could have uh, huge consequences right um, do you think the army is uh, surprised by the wave of uh, protest that it did not uh, anticipate that this would happen on such a level I think so. I think they were surprised about the scale of the resistance uh, and how the people are determined uh, to stay on the street despite the interdiction and also that the internet shutdown during the nights are not very uh, useful uh, and they uh, probably also switched on the internet during the days because it's easier than for the, the army to follow what's going on on the street. So it's com a completely different situation for the army and they clearly underestimate estimated the, the will of the people. Right. Uh, there is also an interesting development. Uh, I mean, uh, the country has been rocked by uh, for decades uh, with ethnic, uh, so-called ethnic wars. And we've seen some of those groups who had essentially reached uh, settlement with the central government now warning uh, that they could essentially take up arms again. Is this uh, something that's maybe not uh, perceived outside of the region, but a real threat that the army is also watching very closely? Exactly. This is a very important fact uh, that the ethnic armed organizations, and we have around 21 of them in the country, that they came together and they made a very strong statement yesterday that they oppose to the coup and that they will uh, counterattack any violence uh, coming from the, the army towards the civilians. And if that would happen, that clearly would mean a war in, in the country, which is in no in nobody's interest. And this is also a, a fact that uh, the government of China is for the moment quite reluctant to, to take sides with the, the army because uh, the stability in the country and for the region is for them now much more important than to continue um, um, business as usual. Right. Uh, we've seen a vivid condemnation. Uh, we've seen the UN Secretary General this Monday, Antonio Guterres, calling on the military to stop the repression, immediately release prisoners and the violence, respect the will of the people. We've seen the foreign ministers of the G7 countries also issue this Tuesday a statement firmly condemning violence and calling for the unconditional release of Aung San Suu Kyi and President Vin uh, Mint, are you uh, surprised, pleasantly surprised, I should add, that the international community is quite firm and, if not unanimous, that there's a consensus on Myanmar that people might not have anticipated? 
Yeah, I think it's quite unique that we see such uh, a unity around the world that um, many, many member states of the UN condemned the coup. Um, and also when I briefed the Security Council on the second day after the coup, that was on the uh, 2nd February, uh, there was a result, a statement of the Security Council meeting uh, that means China and Russia supported the statement uh, and asked for the release of the detained people. And this is uh, quite a strong uh, message uh, coming uh, from the, the international community. Clearly, if we have another discussion, I, I think there will come a next briefing of the Security Council soon. Then maybe they will also discuss uh, sanctions. Then we will see how much China and Russia will support uh, and continue the support of uh, the Security Council. But clearly also the ASEAN countries are not uh, always united. They have the policy of not interference. Uh, and therefore we have uh, certain countries in ASEAN who are reluctant to condemn the coup. Uh, but um, countries like Indonesia, Singapore and Malaysia try to find a, a peaceful solution. So I think it's good to see that um, the, the, the uh, unity, a strong unity in the world. Right. Uh, you mentioned uh, the word sanctions. The U.S. has slapped sanctions on uh, the regime and uh, some of its associates. The European Union had said it would do so in last resort. Are targeted sanctions the way to go or could it be counterproductive? Well, sanctions can always hit also the people on the ground and that we should avoid because they are already poor. But I think targeted sanctions uh, are needed because we have to uh, have a huge pressure now against this coup. And I think any pressure uh, can now help, uh, hopefully, uh, that we can reset this situation. Right. Have you had contact uh, with the military junta since uh, the coup and what are they telling you? Yes, I'm in regular contact with the army since I started my mandate almost three years ago. Uh, and we have a trusted relationship that I could always talk uh, behind closed doors very frankly and also uh, criticize what they did. Uh, and uh, fortunately, in the past, they were quite constructive in the cooperation with me. Um, so that was the uh, reason that I could um, have another uh, meeting after the coup uh, with the deputy commander in chief um, just on the 4th uh, February and a second one on the 15th. Uh, on both meetings, one was even three hours long, uh, they explained me in detail the reason for the coup, uh, but clearly I condemned the coup and I asked the release of all detained uh, people and I also asked what the, their intention is in the what future. What are they telling you? So they told me that they Yes, they have a clear roadmap, he said, with four, five points. Um, and the, the fifth will be to uh, hold a new election uh, to give the power back to the, to the party who will win the, the election. Uh, honestly, uh, I think they have a clear uh, textbook uh, how they uh, will lead such an election because they started to uh, arrest people from NLD. At the end, they will probably ban this uh, party to run for the next election. Then it's clearly they want to stay in power and this we have to avoid uh, firmly. You mentioned the NLD, uh, its leader uh, Aung San Suu Kyi uh, has been uh, arrested. Uh, have you been able to talk to her, to her entourage and how is she doing? Where is she? Um, unfortunately, I couldn't reach her anymore after the coup. Um, uh, we had uh, made an appointment on the 3rd of February to, to call each other, and this we uh, couldn't happen anymore. Uh, I'm in contact with uh, a lot of NLD people, and they told me that uh, she might be still in her house under house arrest. Uh, I asked also the army uh, how she is. Uh, they told me she is peacefully at home, they said. Uh, but clearly, I want to meet her as soon as possible. 
Have you asked to go uh, to Myanmar? And if so, what has been the response? Yes, I immediately asked to come. I said I will take the next flight and will come to continue our discussion because only with a dialogue we can uh, try to find uh, a way out of this situation. They said that I'm always welcome. Uh, they said you are a friend of Myanmar, we know, uh, but for the moment you cannot come. So it's a yes, but not yet. I asked why, and uh, he explained uh, they have two goals before I come. First, they want to continue interrogation of people, especially Doan San Suu Kyi. And uh, the second is to stop uh, the movement of disobedience, so this CDM movement. Uh, and then I could come in a more peaceful environment. Uh, clearly, I explained that I would like to come in a peaceful environment, um, but then as a a tourist, but now I have to come as the special envoy of the UN Secretary General uh, to contribute to a peaceful environment. And so I hope I, I can go soon. Right. Are, are you hoping that the Secretary General will himself reach out to the regime and tell them that you need to go to try to find a peaceful solution before it's too late? He made already uh, such a statement in the public a few days ago, and I will have to brief this Friday the General Assembly in New York, and I will uh, call on all member states to push also for this possibility of my visit. I clearly cannot um, give uh, now uh, um, to, to say that I will find an uh, immediate solution, but we have to, to start uh, a dialogue and uh, to use any means to find a solution. Christine schranner Bergener, I want to thank you very much for appearing here on the France 24 interview, and thank you all for watching it.